I'd never been in New Jersey before. My husband grew up on the west side on 79th Street. But we came to visit a friend in Creskill, and he said there's a group of houses going up down the road. We'd been looking in Connecticut, and I didn't want to live on Long Island because that's where I came from. And he said, you might be interested. They're really good houses. And we were desperate at this point. We had a baby, and I was I think I was pregnant with my second. I'm not sure. But anyway, the house really sold us. It was such a substantial house, 21.5. <laughs> you had to pay extra for a fireplace. And I tell you, the selling point of the house was George commuted to Midtown Manhattan. And the train did commute for one year. It was a decoy. And that was the end of it. It became freight after that but it seemed like a nice family town. I didn't even check on schools when we moved in. I mean, you didn't do things like that. So I'm probably one of the last on Whitman Street in the original house. Anyway, I wanted to do some volunteer work when my kids ended up in school, so we ended up volunteering in the library. And the librarian left, and my friend and I principal asked Judy and I, we please keep the library open for the rest of the semester? And Judy, who had more nerve than I did, she said, we will if you pay us. And <laughs> pay us, it may, maybe a dollar an hour or something, but he did pay us and they couldn't find anybody. So for the next three years, Judy and I were co-librarians. I was the good guy, she was the bad guy. And I liked it, and she didn't, so that settled that. And I liked it so much, I went back to Columbia, got my master's, and the rest is history. Well, I have to tell you, I think I was in the heyday of education. Lyndon Johnson had just passed Title IV-B, which gave a lot of funds to libraries and schools. And so we got, we were in a media explosion. Now, when I say a media explosion, I mean cassette players, overhead transparencies, opaque projectors, slide projectors. I mean, it's almost like what happened the second media explosion, but it was just books at one point, and all of a sudden we had all this media, and I had to go back to Seton Hall and learn how to turn on a cassette player. What were the kids uh, reading back then, or did you see a thirst for, for reading in the early days? Well, and how would you say that? I was in Judy Bloom. I can remember her so well because what she wrote about was such a no-no. Today it would, it would be so mild that it wouldn't matter. But in those days it was quite... Young adult came into its heyday about that time and every time they put something in a book, you know, people would worry. Would the parents hear about it? Would they complain? I, I never had any, any complaints. I guess, but other libraries probably did. But but Judy really was very realistic. Every theme that she had was about bullying, even when um, bullying didn't start recently, of course. Yeah, that whole YA genre didn't just didn't exist when we were growing up. No, it up. didn't. Yeah. I don't know, they still call it young adult? Yeah, yeah. Um, we tried uh, isolating the books. So I set up a whole shelf of young adult, and some student came up to me and said, Mrs. Porras, is that where the dirty books are? So I decided to integrate them. It was, it was safer that way. <laughs> Do you think the kids, um, the kinds of books they were interested in changed during the time you were there? Well, the dinosaur section was always popular, 568. I still remember the Dewey number. Um, did their likes and dislikes? You know, I must say Harry Potter started a whole explosion. It was, it was amazing. I went to London that year, and I went to Foils. Do you know the bookstore Foils? I love it. And they had this big display of Harry Potter. It was the first book. The um, American version had a different name. And I bought it, I read it, and I just loved it. And I took it home, put it on my shelf, I wish I had that book now. You know what that first edition is worth? And I gave it to a lot of kids, and they, they still remember. Remember when you gave me that Harry Potter book? Look, I didn't write the book, but I found out about it. 
And, you know, I, I knew if a kid liked science fiction or fantasy or realistic fiction, I, you know, the classes were small enough that I'd become very familiar with what the kids liked and disliked. I mean, the fact is that the kids read and they looked to me you know, for a role model. I used to do a lot of programs at night. We, I remember we did The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. We did it every week with a pizza and the kids would come in. I think they were fifth graders and we talked about that. I did a lot of book discussion. I said I had a lot of children's authors, so that motivated. Uh, I mean, I, I really didn't like teaching library skills. It used to turn people off. So my big thrust was getting kids into the library and staying there. And did you feel like there were kids who, who you turned on to reading? Oh, yeah, I do. I still meet people downtown who and I haven't a clue they are because they've changed. I've changed too, but maybe they recognize me. Mrs. Porras, I'm still reading. I said, that's wonderful. We used to be downstairs. There was a little room downstairs and they called me in the middle of the summer one year and said, Flossie, the custodian called me, Flossie, if you'll come down to the library, we're moving you upstairs. So we moved all the bookshelves in the middle of the summer, and of course the 900s ended up the wrong place. He did it all backwards, so I had to move all the books. Anyway, but that's, that's where we were, so that's a long time. We've been there since, I would say, the 70s. Yeah, but you started off in the basement. Yeah. Can you think of a particular thing, particular memories you're proud of or things that happen that stick in your mind, an author visit or a... Well, one thing I remember with great pride, you know, I did the Brain Buster, which is a, was a gifted and talented program, but I didn't see it that way. If some kid wanted to be a Brain Buster, fine, let him, let him join, make him feel good. And so we played the county, you know, we were the smallest town of all the towns, you know, we we're up against Paramus, all the big towns, and so we never won anything. But one year, oh my God, I had a team. I had a mathematician, I had a linguist, I had an English, most incredible, and we won. The, this is a meet that they play in June, and I was up against all the other schools in Bergen County, not every school. And we won. We went home with this enormous, <laughs> disgusting-looking trophy. You said, uh, you were telling me last week, the idea of the kids coming to get their library cards. Tell me I started that. that, right, a long time ago, maybe 30 years ago. It seemed like a good idea. Thought it would get the parents in with their kids, and it worked. Obviously, you say a lot of towns are doing it. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you another high spot of my library career is I mentored a few women who became librarians, one of whom you know quite well, Elizabeth. Uh, I, read, I read the book review on Sunday and I go right to my computer and order the books that I see that I like. So that works for me. I tell you, um, I had such joy reading Jane Austen about two years ago and then I read the complete works of Dickens. Once I got on a tear, I was thinking of reading um, Our Mutual Friend by Dickens, which is a mystery. It's really, I think it's one of his best. I've read it twice already. But you know, good books, if you read them again, you find different things in them. In those days, when I first went on the library board, we picked the books. Everybody would come in with their book review from the New York Times. They had a librarian they didn't quite trust to pick the books. So the minute we hired a, a librarian, I think her name was Lee Fries. I think she was one of the first we gave her the duties of, of picking the books. Did you ever hear the story about when they first appointed me to the library board? No. Um, a certain party was in control of Haworth and somebody appointed me. And in, in those days, as I told you, they, um, we picked the books and my name was submitted to the council and they turned me down. The only person rejected from the council, and so they appointed somebody else. And when he heard that I really wanted it, and I was into libraries, I think I was in library school at the time, he resigned. I didn't even know the man. And they asked me 
if I would serve again. They wanted to reappoint me. My husband said, don't do it. I said, why shouldn't I do it? I want to do it. And this time I passed. <laughs> but you know, we always had a lot of people that read in town, so it was a, it, it's always had a support. And you're not uh, some of the naysayers about the future of libraries. You, th you think we have a future? I certainly do. I even think the written word has a future, you know? I, I have a, what do you call it, um, Kindle, but I don't, I'm not comfortable with it. I only take it when I travel. I prefer a page. It's hard to believe that I've lived in town this long because when we first moved in, I think we were eyed with suspicion. We'd go to vote and somebody would say, well, we used to pick blueberries where you live. I said, tell me about it. Our house was a bog. We had, oh my God, that's a, till we got sewers, that was one of the high spots of, of our existence. That's why the blueberries grew there. But I'd with suspicion because you were in the new part of town. I think so, yeah. Well, it, it all, you know, it just wasn't one house. We all kind of arrived at the same time, young and raring to go, but every one of us that moved in was probably a credit to their community, you know, but. <laughs> I guess if you've lived in a town, you eye with suspicion. That's why they don't like building new developments in areas sometimes. Too many schools, too many kids, right. I'll tell you another, I think, I think a really interesting story, um, kind of a wonderful life kind of story. When the manor, which we call where I live over there, all of us were just about the same boat. We were all returning GIs, we were just starting off we were tight for money, and we found out that the manor houses were evaluated for much more than the beautiful houses on Sunset. So we got together, and nobody knew anybody, but a couple of lawyers who really got together, and we got a, somebody to represent us, and we sued the town for reevaluation of, of the homes. We went to Hackensack, and I can remember the uh, person who did the evaluation. I shouldn't say this, but he was a rather elderly gentleman. And the judge said, well, where, does, where are the evaluations? Where does he write them? And he said, well, he writes them on his cuff. Anyway, we lost in Hackensack, and we appealed to the state, and we won. So they reevaluated the whole town, and we got a great reduction. So that's a, an interesting story yeah. that all these people who didn't know each other, we had meetings, you know, but, you know, somebody led us there. But it's, I think it's quite a, a story. I think my days in the Hallworth Library were the days of the, I mean, I had a secretary. I had a generous budget. I mean, everything went right for me. I said it was the best job in the whole world. I mean, I didn't retire till my mid-70s, and I probably could have kept on going. <laughs>